Hi folks, another glorious, heartfelt, warm and charming episode. I have a question for you. What is Manchester? Dentist appointments, lying about your age, and Justice Sachs have in common. If you said hardcore English jazz done by a boomer posing as a Gen Xer, you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> Today we're talking about the sad story of Kellyanne Bates. Buckle up. Yeah, you better buckle up. Sit down, pour yourself maybe two, two to four fingers of the something strong. <laughs> pour yourself enough that you're going to have a headache before you get to bed. This is going to be a rough one. I'm John. And I'm Kat. And this is Castagast. You know what we just did, folks? (laughs) We just went through about a minute and a half of our... Uh, episode today. Yeah. Yes, I know we do a podcast, <laughs> and we realized the goddamn microphone wasn't plugged in. So, I'm... welcome to the most disorganized podcast <laughs> on true crime and other shit. Uh, we're drinking red wine. Yes, today. now we're drinking a nu- we're double fisting. Mm-hmm. Cheers to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, quick heads up is. Most of our fun and jokes will likely be now at the beginning and then at the end. There is very little room for us to be having a good time during this episode. (laughs) I will try as best I can to keep it light. Yes, I don't think that will be possible, but we have plenty of opportunity to get cleanse our palate after the episode is done. Fuck. So are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Go for it. So today we are talking about Kelly Ann Bates. Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. If anyone watches Downton Abbey. And if you don't watch Downton, <laughs> I don't want you listening to this podcast. <laughs> Turn this fucker off right now. Get on Netflix and do yourself a favor. And then return back to us. Please, we... <laughs> please come back. We, we, we need the viewers. <laughs> the listeners. The, the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> don't view us. <laughs> okay. You can view us though on YouTube. Yes, Cadam Concoction. Cadam Concoction. All right, so Kellyanne Bates was born May 18th, 1978. Was that a Wednesday? In Hattersley, Greater Manchester, England. Manchester. When Kellyanne was 16, she announced to her parents that she was going to be bringing her boyfriend home for them to meet. 32-year-old James Patterson Smith. Sorry, how old was she? 16. And she's dating a 32-year-old. (laughs) Yeah. So in Britain, the legal adult age is 16. However, her parents were completely unaware of the age difference before Kellyanne left school and moved in with him. So she didn't bring uh, him home to meet them. As far as I know, reports, different reports said two different things that they met before she moved in with him and after. So... So, but th- this was the first time they met? Yeah, the first time he they met. He just didn't look like a very young man. And like... she concealed their age difference. So Kellyanne's mother did try, and I'm sorry, I, sh- I should state, they had already been dating two years at this point. So they met when she was 14. Nice, good for him. So I will I will get to that. But So Kellyanne's mother... Fucking pervert. Kellyanne's mother did try asking around for more information on this 32-year-old... James Patterson Smith, but turned up nothing because Patterson was actually 49 years old. What? So he was 33 years older than Kellyanne, which I don't think Kellyanne knew. I think she truly believed he was the age that he was. Okay, so there's lots of lies here. So he told her... He's a complete garbage. He's 49. He told her he's 32. Well, they met when she was 14, so he was, quote, air quotes, 30 years old. But he was really 47. Correct. Are are any of you, like, writing this down? Like, this math? (laughs) We're going to need, like, an algebraic equation here to get this down. So let's talk about our pal James a little bit. He's not my pal. 
So James was an unemployed divorcee living in Gorton, Manchester. Oh, sounds like just the type of guy to date a 14-year-old. His 10-year marriage ended in 1980 due to abusive and violent behavior. After his marriage ended, he started dating a 20-year-old for two years who he abused. Uh, of course. She stated that he used her as a punching bag and even beat her severely while pregnant with their child. Jesus. He, he would strike her in the face, hit her in the head with an ashtray, and would kick her in the legs or between the legs. Who hits people with ashtrays? She escaped the relationship after he attempted to drown her while in the bath. I kind of hope that ashtray was empty when he hit her with it. Oh, like it has like a lit cigarette in it. <laughs> you know, you get secondhand smoke and while uh, getting and, and bludgeoned by a fucking mine. ashtray. I hope it was ceramic and not glass. You know those crystal ashtrays from like back in like the nineteen eighties <laughs> that you'd see like at a restaurant. Are you done? I, I'm getting a look I, now. Yeah. Go ahead. After that relationship, he moved on to 15-year-old Wendy Motorshead. She was also <laughs> abused by James, and in one attack, he held her head underwater in the kitchen sink, attempting to drown her. Jesus so Christ. Bit of a theme uh, he has with water. Yeah, no kidding. So, James met Kellyanne when she was 14 while she was babysitting for friends, and from then, he began grooming her. How did, how did she meet her, him while babysitting, like he showed up at the door. I'm assuming he was friends of the people she was babysitting. This guy has friends. So as mentioned, two years after dating, Kellyanne left school and moved in with James in the Gorton home. There was a brief period where she left James. Uh, her mother had described that she had changed drastically. She started wearing baby clothing. She stopped washing and bathing and would just lay on the couch all day long. James be uh, James, James began to stalk Kellyanne, so she eventually went back to him. As you do. Her parents did see noticeable bruises and bite marks on her, but she always ex- explained them away as being accidents. Bite marks as accidents. Her mother. I com- tripped into his teeth. Her mother confronted her one day while Kellyanne was in the bedroom about a bite mark. Oh, good. And Kellyanne claimed that she fell into a fence. Her mother, not believing her, told her it very clearly looks like a bite mark, but she stuck to the story of it being an accident and falling into a fence. There was also another incident reported where she, her face, the complete half of her face was a big bruise, and she oh. had said that she had woken up unconscious, apparently jumped at school. Oh, Jesus. In December of 1995, Kelly Ann resigned from her part-time job and became even more isolated from her family. In March of 1996, Kelly's parents received cards from her for her birthday and an anniversary, but they were in James's writing, and oh. he didn't even put Kelly's name onto the card. Kelly's brother did go to her home, and James's home, yeah. trying to see her, but James claimed she wasn't home, and a concerned neighbor even once asked about her after just seeing her briefly in an upstairs window. Oh, really? So Kellyanne's mother was able to finally visit her once at James's home. Kelly barely spoke, and her mother also noticed a hole in the living room floor. And when asked about it, James claimed it was the result of a gas leak repair. However, as we'll move forward, it is believed that that is where Kelly was kept. A hole. How deep was this hole? Uh, it was a fairly large hole. Where would you keep a hole in your living room floor? Like, would it be like the centerpiece or like just under the coffee I table? I believe it was in the middle of the room. It was described as being in the middle of the room. That's not going to feng shui well. So March 10th of 1996 would be the last time Kelly's mother would speak with her uh. when they spoke on the phone about a dentist appointment that Kelly had missed. Kelly was had promised to be there the following Sunday for Mother's Day. But instead, uh, her mother received a card, and it was written in Kelly's handwriting. It wasn't written in Kelly's handwriting. I wonder who wrote it. Okay, so this is probably where we're going to get... Extra dark. Extra dark. Dim your lights, gentlemen. Kellyanne's mother made several attempts in helping Kelly by speaking to her doctor and police, but due to her being a legal adult... Nothing could be done. She 
when she spoke to the doctor, the doctor said, well, you can make a doctor's appointment in her name and come and speak with us. And then if she ever comes forward, we have it mm. on record. The police, however, never made any wellness checks at the home. On April 16th, 1996, James walked into the Gorton police station claiming he accidentally killed Kelly during an argument in the bathtub. He claimed that she inhaled water and died, but he was also kind enough to say that she liked to pretend to be unconscious. When police arrived at the home, they found Kelly's body naked in the bedroom, but blood was also found throughout the home. After a post-mortem exam, it was revealed that Kelly's body had over 150 separate injuries. Jesus, holy fuck. For the last month, four weeks of Kellyanne's life she was bound by her own hair to a radiator the pathologist who examined her body said that he has examined almost 600 homicide victims and has never come across injuries so extensive holy fuck Kelly was subjected to scalding to her buttocks and left leg Burns on her thighs caused by the application of a hot iron, a fractured arm, multiple stab wounds that caused caused by knives, forks, and scissors, stab wounds inside her mouth, crushed injuries to her hand, mutilation of her ears, nose, eyebrows, mouth, lips, and genitalia. Jesus fucking Christ. Wounds caused by a spade and pruning shears. Both of her eyes were gouged out. What? Later stab wounds to the empty eye sockets. Oh my God. And a partial scalping. This went over four weeks of her life. It was revealed by the pathologist that her eyes were removed not less than five days and no, no more than three weeks before her death. She was starved and lost approximately 20 kilograms in weight. Oh, my God. And she was also without water several days before her death. These injuries did not take place at one time. They were caused over a long period of time, so extensive that James deliberately and systematically tortured her, said Peter Openshaw, the prosecutor, in the trial. Her cause of death was a drowning But prior to the drowning, she was beaten on the head with a shower head, knocked unconscious. James completely denied the murder. He stated that Kelly would, quote, put him through hell, end quote. Mm -hmm. He made claims that she taunted him about his dead mother and that she had a habit of hurting herself to make herself to make him look worse. So I'm going to crush my own hands and scalp myself and gouge out my own eyes just to make you look worse. This guy is a fucking idiot. When asked during trial why he blinded, stabbed, and beat her, he said that she dared him to do it, challenging him. Like, I can't even with this steaming heap like, of does garbage. Does this fucking asshole actually think people would buy this garbage? A consultant psychiatrist uh, testified saying that James had severe paranoid disorder with morbid jealousy and lived in a, quote, distorted reality, end quote. In other words, he's a complete fucking asshole. James's exes also testified against him, confirming his violent behavior. And God bless these jurors because it only took them one hour of deliberation to find 49-year-old James Patterson Smith guilty of the murder of Kelly Ann Bates. Please tell me you got the death penalty. Well, we're in England. I don't think they have the death penalty. I'll have to double check that, though. Get the fucking guillotine out here. Having been on jury duty myself, though, I would not be surprised if they had already decided his guilt. And they just maybe thought an hour was an appropriate amount of time to make it look like they were deliberating, Mm. maybe got their free lunch, and then went out. I would be shocked that it legitimately took them 60 minutes to find this man guilty. Jesus, like, wasn't we didn't even get through this entire fucking list of shit, and I was like, kill him. Kill this piece of shit. Yeah. 
And I would have done the same. I would have, he would have been guilty before we even reached deliberation. So this asshat was sentenced to life imprisonment with mandatory to serve at least 20 years. So after 20 years, he could be eligible for parole. However, I highly doubt that he would ever be granted that. What, what fucking imbecile judge would even allow? Well, it's the, Canada's very similar with their, we have the life, we have life sentence, but there is the minimum of, of serving X amount of years before you are eligible for parole. So the judge, Mr. Justice Sachs, <laughs> That's what I call my uh, your my, balls. No, my <laughs> no, no. That's what I called my crayons that I used in my uh, course on um, civil justice. In my uh, okay, I, so we'll <laughs> see. We'll just go with that. My joke was funnier. Fuck off. <laughs> so, Mister Justice Sachs said, "Quote: This has been a terrible case." A catalog of depravity by one human being upon another. You are highly dangerous. You are an abuser of women, and I intend, so far as it is in my power, that you will abuse no more. End quote. Nice. The jurors did have to seek counseling after having to see the photographs of Kelly and her injuries, as well as having to hear about the violence they endured. Oh, Jesus Christ. I did read in a report that prior to seeing the body, um, they were, the parents were told by the coroners that they will make it look like she was sleeping. And then after viewing the body, they had actually made a visit to her home, saying, we can only try our best. Really? I, apparently her body was in very bad condition. I mean, she was starved, scalped, mutilated, had cuts in her mouth, oh. in, her, in her eye sockets, crushed hands, lost 20 kilograms, if I didn't already say that. Like she, Those poor parents. Oh, absolutely. That they have to fucking deal with this piece of shit. So I think we should... I, I hope James Patterson Smith gets his times 100 in prison. But I think we should end this discussing Kelly. She was described as a strong and sporty girl who wanted to be a teacher. She was taken far too soon and should be remembered for the light that she was and the joy that she brought to those around her. And my heart absolutely breaks for her family. So that is the story of Kellyanne Bates, who was brutally murdered at 17 years old. Oh, that's fucking awful. Well, that fucked up my evening. <laughs> it is yes. All kidding aside, it is a very. Uh, sorry, what year the, was this again? Is that fucker still in jail? Do we know? Yeah, he's still he's still alive. Um, I can't remember the years you were saying. Yeah, so he was. This happened in 1996. In 96. April of 96. You know, it makes me think. You know, when you know that like someone in your family is dating a fucking asshole who's controlling and shit, and you know. It's bad for them. But you don't know how bad. And this idea that you don't address it with them because you think that's going to push them deeper into the relationship. The mother has been quoted saying exactly those words. She tried with numerous attempts with the doctor and the police. And she did confront Kelly um, multiple times. And... But her ultimate fear was that she was going to drive Kelly further into James's arms God. and she was a legal adult so there was nothing she could do she could not forbid it and she could not ground her she couldn't do she wasn't even living at home anymore so uh, her mother was quoted saying that when she met James standing there in her kitchen for a brief millisecond she saw a knife on the counter behind him and thought about stabbing him Oh, my God. And she says that's a decision that she regrets no kidding. to this day. You hear about, like, fathers in Texas who fucking destroy the assholes who rape and, and hurt their daughters. Mm -hmm. I feel like the uh, she did everything she possibly could have. All that, could, the only thing that could have saved her is somehow a vigilante mm -hmm. fucking got in there and killed the fucker. Yeah. What restraint she must have had. To in not the, stab that fuck. And, or even to be in the same room as him during the trial. Oh. That would have been 
difficult on epic proportions. Like I can't even imagine the the thought of having to do something like that. What a piece of fucking scum. He, you will see um, the photos. What uh, does he look like? Okay, so you can see here, John, what he looks like. You know, if you could kill someone for being an ugly fuck, he definitely he would have been killed multiple times. He, he definitely boy. takes the cake. It's the the part that was awful for me. All of it was awful, but the fact that he had removed her eyes and she was still alive for at minimum at at most three weeks. At minimum, she lasted another five days. God, how so she could have been three weeks without eyes or one week without eyes. You and, just and like hope for death. Of, on top of everything else that she in, endured, I, I, you can only hope that she was unconscious for majority of it. Yeah. But damn. So the case of Kelly Ann Bates. I feel um, is an important one to tell because it deals with domestic violence. I yeah. feel if we tell more of these stories, more women will seek help. And I do think there is a um, conversation to be had when it comes to teenage domestic violence. He wasn't a teenager, but but still, she was definitely still a youth. Yeah. You know, and... and well, you think about, like... And he started grooming her since she was 14. Totally. So who knows what kind of things she was subjected to for two years. Well, you just look at how... You just think about how dumb you were when you were a teen and in your 20s. You look at today's oh, teens I'm, and I people who are in their 20s. They're fucking imbeciles. Yeah, it's part of being a teenager. You're just this idiotic teenager that you think you know everything there is to know. Yeah. And it's just... It's not that way, but... Now we're just aging ourselves. <laughs> I don't care about aging myself. I'm an elder millennial. So any final thoughts? I all- hate him. Yeah. That's that's what I've come Yeah. That's what I've come from this. You know, it may, it's interesting that you brought up that we need to be telling these domestic stories because when you think about COVID, Absolutely. you know, what has increased so much during COVID because of these stupid ridiculous lockdowns. Yes. Depression. Suicide. Suicides and domestic, domestic violence. violence. How many of these fucking stories? And child abuse. And child abuse. Yeah. How many of these stories are we are, people like us, maybe 10 years from now, I hope at, at the very most, and mm-hmm. hopefully we get out of this sooner, but like that the story is going to come out, out when these people are able to escape from these fucking dicks. Well, now they've made hand signals for women to do when they're in a Zoom meeting or from a window or something, it's a hand gesture that we'll post um, on our social media and on the YouTube video with this video. We will post that hand signal that women are to do, but it looks like this. It's thumb into palm and then curling the fingers over the palm. Mm. And the commercial is actually like heart-wrenching to watch because it's just a woman having a Zoom call with a friend. Oh. And her husband is like making dinner or something in the background. And she just hides her body in front of her hand and does the hand gesture. I just read a story a day or two ago on uh, Mel Robbins' Instagram page. So if you don't know who Mel Robbins is, go give her a follow. She's a great motivational speaker. But she posted this story about how a girl's life was saved by doing that hand gesture, I believe, in a car. Oh, really? Pulled up to the light, and I believe she did uh, the hand gesture. And I think it was a sex trafficking Shit, situation. Really? So that, it, it just goes to show people might bypass watching this commercial or looking at this picture. It does work. Wow. It does work. So we will post resources. Um, Do we know, I'm sorry, that's okay. if I might have missed it. Do we know what caused them to be such a piece of fucking garbage? Uh, there, I didn't find too much on his backstory, to be completely honest. Murderpedia, Wikipedia, um, and some of the other sources that I went to that I'll link didn't touch on his backstory too much, but frankly, I don't, I don't care. I just always, like we've said in in previous episodes, it's it's always some fucking psychotic parent Mm -hmm. behind this shit. 
Yeah. Some insane mother. But he could just be a monster Yeah, himself, he could be just a monster. You know. And that, that's the scary bit, too, eh? If you don't know the mystery behind this fucking piece of shit. Yeah. What leads a person to do this kind of evil? I just don't know how you could scalp someone and remove their eyes. Oh, I know how you could. If you were doing it to him. Yeah. That'd be pretty fucking easy. Yeah. Yeah, so he was found guilty and is still alive, uh, but still in prison, serving in England. So... That's good news. He's yeah. 72 now. Wouldn't it be funny he gets out and then someone who hate, hates on the elderly beats the shit out of him? I would hope that maybe... Um, I, I wouldn't be upset if I heard that someone or Kellyanne's father was waiting for him outside the prison walls. Oh, I honestly absolutely. would not be protesting that or covering that crime. I would not cover that crime. I don't feel that's worth covering. <laughs> well, it would be a good news story. Exactly. It'd be like, you know, some good news. <laughs> some good news. Here are all the killers that we covered that are still fucking suffering. Mm-hmm. And this piece of shit died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Everyone do a shot for each of these scum. So um, we will wrap it up. That is the story of Kellyanne Bates. And uh, as I hope you enjoyed listening, despite how horrific it is, you get to hear a different story and maybe some resources if you need them or if anyone around you may need these resources. Yeah, that's a good point. If you're uh, you're playing the home game, make sure you have an extra shot for this one. Yeah, have an extra shot and have an extra shot for Mr. Justice Sex. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) Laying down the law. (laughs) And on that note, we will wrap it up. See you, folks. You can check us out on YouTube at Catum Concoction. That's C-A-T-A-M-C-O-N-C-O-C-T-I-O-N. <laughs> and on Instagram at cast underscore aghast. Remember, there's a silent H. <laughs> <laughs>